Good afternoon, everyone. I am so sorry for starting late. I hope you are all good. Good afternoon. Without wasting any time, welcome to your session 16 where we're looking at confidence interval. We continue from where we left off on, on Wednesday. Do you have any comments, questions regarding what we did before we start with the recap? Okay, if there are no comments, so let's do recap. Let's recap on what we've learned. So we learned that we do confidence interval for the population when the population standard deviation is known and today we're going to continue where it is unknown and then on wednesday we'll do the population proportion what we've learned about the confidence interval for the mean when the population is known that the three assumptions assumptions needs to be met the population standard deviation has to be given or known the population needs to be normally distributed and if the population is not normally distributed, we need to use the large sample size. And in order for us to calculate or find the confidence interval, we use the formula, the point estimate plus or minus the critical value times the standard error, which our point estimate for the mean when the population standard deviation is known, it's X bar plus or minus because we have the upper limit and the lower limit of the confidence interval times the critical value. And since it's the critical value from, <clears throat> from where the population standard deviation is known, so we use the Z table and we go find the critical value by using the confidence level which is one minus alpha, where alpha is your level of significance, times the standard error, which is the population standard deviation divided by the square root of your sample size. We also looked at how to we find that critical value to say if we are given a 95% confidence interval, we take that 95% confidence interval, which is one minus alpha. We find the value of alpha. And since because we've got two boundaries, we go and divide alpha by two so that we can get the value of uh, <coughs> 0,0025. And then we take this value of 0,025, we go to the table, we look for the Z value corresponding with this probability. And that Z value, we find it on the negative side of the table and it corresponds to 1.96 on the negative side of the table. And since we're dealing with confidence interval, we just say 1.96 and we have our critical values or our critical boundaries. And we use those critical values to find the confidence interval. We also learned that there are common levels of confidence that we use to test, and especially the 90%, 95%, and 99%. And you can learn them, or you, you can learn them by heart, or you can use the formula and go get the critical value on the table. 
the thing that you need to be aware of is only for 90 percent you need to always remember that for 90 percent the critical value is one comma six four five Then we also looked at how to find the confidence interval when we give in information. And we use this information, this example, where we were given 11 circuits from a large population with the mean resistance of 2.0 and the population standard deviation of 0 0.35. And remember, the three assumptions needs to be stated. So we are told we use a normal a normal population. So assumption number one and assumption assumption number two and three are met because it says the population needs to be normally distributed. And if it's not normally distributed, then we use the large sample size. A large, a large sample size. So here the population is normal. So we are also given another exam assumption is you need to check if you are given the stand population standard deviation. We are given the population standard deviation, which is also called the sigma. And we Calculate the value by using point estimate plus or minus the critical value times the standard error. We know the critical value for a 95% since the question said at the 95% confidence interval. Go to the table, we go find the 1.96 and which is the 9.1196 that we already found. And then we substitute it into the formula standard population standard deviation divided by the square root of the sample size, which is 11, and found that the two boundaries or the mean lies between 1.9932 and 2.46. And we said also we can write it as 1.9932 double colon, semicolon, 2.4. 6, 8. And that's what we've learned last week. And we also learned how to interpret it, but it's not required for you to know how to do the interpretation. So today we're going to continue. And we're going to continue learning about how the basic, some of the basic concepts of uh, confidence interval. We know that we've learned how to construct the confidence interval where the population standard deviation is known. So today we're going to learn where the population standard deviation is unknown. And then on Wednesday we do the proportion. Okay. So when we construct a confidence interval where the population standard deviation is unknown, we're going to assume that if the population standard deviation is not given to us, then they would have given us the sample standard deviation, which is the S. So they will give us the sample standard deviation. You need to pay very close attention or be very careful when you read the question. Sometimes the question might just straightforward and say the sample standard deviation is or S is equals to or they might say from a sample of this much, the standard deviation is this much. From a sample of this much, so let's say our sample size is 11. From a sample size of 11, the standard deviation found was 3.5. By just reading the question like that, 
you clearly can see that the standard deviation they are talking about is coming from the sample. So when you read the question, you need to look out for more cues or keywords, things that will tell you whether are you working with the population standard deviation or are you working with the sample standard deviation? And since because we're working with the sample standard deviation, this will introduce some uncertainties in terms of the things that we are doing because the sample sizes or the samples that come from multiple samples differ from one sample to the other. And in that case, since we're using the sample standard deviation, we're then going to use the T distribution instead of using the normal distribution. Okay. Always remember, also, when we find the confidence intervals, the same will still apply. We're going to use the formula point estimate plus or minus the critical value times the standard error. Now, our critical value will not come from the cumulative standardized normal distribution, distribution Z value. It will come from the T distribution table. Your standard error will still stay the same because it will still be your standard deviation because now it will be the sample standard deviation divided by the square root of your sample size. Your point estimate for the mean will still remain as your statistic or your X bar or your sample mean. And the formula will look like that. X bar plus or minus the critical value, which is T alpha divided by two, so therefore it means we're still going to have to find the level of confidence and use the level the and use the significance level or the level of significance alpha to go find the critical value on the table. But now the T table looks different. Yeah, I'm only having T alpha divided by two. The critical value when we get to it, we're going to find it by using T alpha divided by two and the degrees of freedom. And our degrees of freedom is N minus one. But also similarly with confidence interval for the mean where the population standard deviation is unknown, there are a couple of assumptions that needs to be made in order for you to know that you're going to use the T distribution. One, the population standard deviation will be unknown or it will not be given to you. The population needs to be normally distributed and if it is not normally distributed, then we need to have a larger sample size also for T distribution. So the only key thing here which differentiate between what we did on Wednesday and what we're going to be doing today is assumption number one. So let's learn how to find this critical value. To find the critical value, we're going to use the T distribution table and because we use the T distribution table, like I said, our critical value, we find it using T alpha divided by two and the degrees of freedom. We're going to look at that just now. With T distribution, as the value of your critical values increases, they tend, especially when N increases, the values of your T distribution tends to become your normal distribution. And we will look at the table just now. 
as the value of your N, which you use to calculate your degrees of freedom, the value as the values of N increases, the T distribution tends to become normally distributed. Let's look at how we find the critical value. So we're going to go to the actual table, but for now I just want to use this slide to demonstrate. So we know that our table of the Z distribution table, we have our Z values at the top and the last digit at the, at the top, sorry, on the left and then other values at the top. And we have the the probabilities within the table, and we use this to go find the critical value. With the T table, it works different. Your T table is split in terms of your degrees of freedoms and your alpha divided by two at the top. We're going to go to the table just now. So we're always going to be using the upper tail areas of the table. On the left, you will have your degrees of freedom, and at the top, you will have your alpha divided by two values. So let's look at an example here where we have, we are given at 95% confidence interval, we, sorry, at 90% confidence interval, so this is at 90% confidence interval and n is equal to 3. Find the critical value, which is T alpha divided by 2 and your degrees of freedom, which is T alpha divided by 2 and n minus 1. To find that, we're going to find our alpha first. Our alpha, remember, it is 1 minus alpha is equals to 0, 0,9, which our alpha will be 1 minus 0, 0,9, which is equals to 0, 0,10, which is our 0, 0,10 there. Our alpha of 0, 0,10 will be 0, 0,10 divided by 2 and n is 3 minus 1, therefore our t alpha will be 0, 0, 0,05 and 2. So we're going to use the two values, our degrees of freedom of 2 and alpha 0, 0, 0,02. So we go to the top of the table and look for 0, 0, 0,05 and go to the left side of the table and look for two. Where they both will meet, that's where we will find our critical value. Let's do another exercise example. We'll do it on the table itself. We'll do more ex exercises on the table. Okay, so <clears throat> we need to go to the T table and usually I think it is immediately after the normal distribution table. So you can find your T tables in your book, in your study guide, in at the back of your past exam papers or at the back of the prescribed book. you need to make sure that you use the right T table. Okay, this is the T table we're going to use right now. It's called table E3, and it is also called the critical values of T. When you use this table, you can ignore the top part where it says cumulative normal dis or cumulative probabilities. That top part we will never use. 
you can just ignore that. If you look at the table, you will see that your degrees of freedom are on the left and they run to the table goes over multiple pages as well. And remember when I said when the values of T increases of N, sorry, when the values of N increases, especially when it comes to the degrees of freedom, the values of N increases, you will notice that they become normally distributed. So this is the same as 1.28. This is 1.645. This is 1.96. And this is 2.333. And this will be 2.58. And these are your normal, your normal distribution uh, critical values. As you can see, the first one is 10%. So for 10%, for 95%, remember 95% it's 1,96. So you will see there is 0, 0,025 for that 95% confidence interval. And it's the same as that. And that is what I was explaining then. But anyway, we were not looking for those ones. Let's do one activity. We can use the top part. So find at a 95% confidence interval where n is equals to 12. Find the critical value. So to find that critical value, we say our critical value will be alpha divided by 2 and the degrees of freedom, which our degrees of freedom is alpha divided by 2, which is n minus 1. And therefore, because we know what at 95% is, will be 0,95 is equals to 1 minus 0,95. Uh, sorry, is equals to 1 minus alpha. which then alpha is equals to 0, 0,05. So then we can come here and say T 0, 0,05 divided by 2 and our degrees of freedom N is 12. So that will be 12 minus 1, which then gives us T T of 0, 0,0250 0, and the degrees of freedom of 11. So it means we need to come to the degrees of freedom and look for 11 and go to the top and look for 0, 0,025 on where it says upper tail areas and look for 0, 0,025. Where they both meet, that will be our critical value. And that is our critical value. I want you, I'm going to give you two minutes or three minutes. Find the critical value where N is 6 at a 99% confidence level. Oh, confidence interval.
do, 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 do we have the answer? I gave you ample of time now. Let's see. 4.032. That's what Salah is saying. Let's see. So, to find alpha, we say 0 0.99 is equals to 1 minus alpha, which means alpha will be equals to 0 0.01, which is 1 minus 0 0.99. So, to find T, alpha divided by 2 and N minus 1, T will be 0 0.01 divided by 2, and our N is 6 minus 1. Therefore, our T will be 0, 0,05 and the degrees of freedom of 5. So we can look for degrees of freedom of 5 and look for 0, 0,05 at the top where they both meet. Um, should it not be 0, 0, 0, 0, 0,005? Yeah, why did you guys leave me until I get to the answer? 0, 0,05 and 5. Because I didn't even calculate that. Okay. So then it is the last one. Which is zero comma, uh, which is four comma zero three two two. Yeah, four comma zero three two two. So do you get the do do you get it? Do you know how to do to find the critical value on the T table? So let's go do an example so that we can we can find more activities that we can use. Okay. I'm not going to go too much into this slide because that's what we just explained right now. Uh, let's look at an example. A random sample of N equals 25 has the mean of 50 and the standard deviation of 8 Form a 95% confidence interval. They haven't given me sigma, so it means my population standard deviation is unknown. They have given me S, which is my sample standard deviation. Therefore, it means I'm going to use the formula X bar plus or minus my critical value of T alpha divided by 2 and the degrees of freedom times the standard error, which will be my sample standard deviation divided by the square root of N. Substituting everything that is given, I'm given 50 plus or minus my critical value, I must do it outside so that I can just only substitute the critical value. So my T alpha divided by 2 and N minus 1 will be given by, I'm told I must do 95% confidence interval, 1 minus alpha of 0, 0,95. Therefore, alpha will be equals to 0, 0,05. So it means my T will be 0, 0,05 divided by 2 and my degrees of freedom. I'm told that N is 25. 
So it will be 25 minus 1. And this will be T of 0, 0,025, 0, and 24. Then I must go to the table. On the table, I must look for T 0, 0.025 and the degrees of freedom of 24. So T 0, 0.025, it's this column. My T of 24, my degrees of freedom of 24, T 0, 0.025 and the degrees of freedom of 24. There is 24 where they both meet. That's my critical value. My critical value is 2 So 2,0639 is my critical value. Then I must multiply this. Oh, sorry. Multiply by the, critic, by the standard error, which is my sample. Standard deviation of 8 divided by my square root of sample size, which is 25. Then we need to calculate the other side. So eight divide eight divide by the square root of twenty five, which is eight divided by five. I get one comma two point zero six three nine times one comma six. The side is 50 plus or minus. And if I multiply the answer I get by of 1,6, multiply by 2.0639, I get 3.0639. Zero two two, and remember, we can then split at this point. We're going to create two two values. So we create the upper side, which will be fifty minus three point. 3022 and the upper side which will be 50 plus 3.022 and therefore this side we get 
46.698. And on the other side, we will get 53.022, which is the same as the exercise we have here. Any question? If there are no questions, here is your exercise. You've got 10 minutes. Um, if you are done before that time, please let me know if you are done. Um, and then within five minutes or so, after five minutes, I will ask you if you need extra time. But I just need an indication to know if many people are done also you can use the chat to post your answers as well it will give me an indication
Okay. Um, not getting any of the options. I'm going with option five reluctantly. Fiso says option five. Okay. Let's see. What are we given? We are given the sample mean of 900, the standard deviation of 30, sample standard deviation, which means the population is not known. We give in S and our sample size. So let's substitute into our formula plus or minus our critical value times our standard error. Let's go find our 0 0.95, 1 minus alpha, which will be alpha will be 0 0.05 our critical value of alpha divided by two. At this point, I am not even going to go with substituting alpha of 0 0.05 divided by. We know what that is because we know what alpha divided by two is 0 0.025. So I'm just going to substitute T of 0 0.025. And we know our N n is 100 so if our n is equals to 100 therefore our degrees of freedom will be 100 minus 1 which is 99 so let's quickly just substitute into this formula we will go and find the critical value the mean it's 900 plus or minus let's go find the critical value on the table We are looking for 99 uh, and 0, 0.25. Let's first find where 0, 0.25 is in the third column. So 0, 0.25 and 99. We need to go to the bottom and look for 99. 97, 98, 99, and we're looking for the third column. One, two, three, third column from the right, which is this. My on the right column, 0, 0,025, and the degrees of freedom of 99, which gives us 1,9842. So we find 1,9842. For One, come on. I don't know what's wrong with me today. 1,9842. And we substitute times our standard deviation 30 
divide by the square root of our sample size, which is 100, and we calculate the values. So, we have 30 divided by the square root of 100 equals 3 multiply that with 1 comma 9842 we get Nine hundred plus or minus five comma nine five two six. So let's expand it. Nine hundred minus five comma nine five two six and nine hundred plus. Five comma nine five two six. Are you also getting the same? Yes, yes. I'm getting the same. Minus five comma. Nine five two six equals eight nine four comma zero four seven four. So probably there was an errata on this question as well. Don't do. I am just want to double check the values quickly. Maybe I copied the wrong question. No, copied the right question. Mm. So we getting eight nine four point zero four seven four on the other side. It would have been a plus five point nine five two six. I don't know. <clears throat> so there was an errata on that question. So we can ignore all, all the values that are there.
So we can ignore all these values and use the ones that we get. So we have 905.9526. And on this side, we have 900 minus 5.9526. It's 894.047.74, which is none of those values that are reflected here. Even not even close. <clears throat> okay, let's look at the second one. With the second one, it's also the same, but we need to use our critical value will be T alpha divided by two and the degrees of freedom will be T at 99% alpha is 0, 0,0. 0, 0,1 and at alpha divided by 2 it will be 0, 0,005 so therefore the year will be 0, 0,005 and our degrees of freedom on this one will be uh, the same as what we had previously it will be 100 minus 1 which is 99 so we go to the table We'll go to the table. I don't know, I should have shared my entire screen. This sort of moving between the screens back and forth, it's not working. Just give me a sec. Let me share my entire screen. It's just that my screen has so many things open right now. <clears throat> so we need to go to the table. T table, we're looking for 99 and 0, comma, let's go find where 0, comma, 0, 0,05 is at. It's the last row, the last column. And we're looking at the last column at 99. Sorry. Oh. Go to the bottom and we go at 99 it's two please call it out for me sorry let's go right it up six two six four So our critical value is 2, 6264. I forgot now. Yes, 6264. Yes, yes. 6264. Let's take it up. X bar plus or minus the critical value with the degrees of freedom as divided by the square root of n. Our x bar is 900 plus or minus our critical value. We did go find it. It's 2 comma 6264 times our standard deviation of 30 divided by square root of 100 which can be calculated now. We did calculate this side and we did find that 30 divided by square root of 100 is 
tri. Multiply that with 2.6264, we get 900 plus or minus 7.8792 and we expand it 900 minus 7.8 Seven nine two and nine hundred plus seven point eight seven nine two. So if I do the plus first, I get. 907.8792 and if I do the negative, I get 89. 2.1208. So, is there an answer like that? Mm -hmm. Also, not on this options. Because that one is 862, this one is 864, 852.869. I think. When they did the options on these questions, either they give the wrong, they get the Z values instead of the T distribution. Okay, and let's go back to the previous one uh, because the next question is linked to both of these questions. So remember this one, we had the answer as 89. Uh, 894 to 905. The second one we have 892 and 907. So by looking at the two, uh, remember last week uh, on Wednesday we discussed uh, someone's mic is on and they are moving paper. Okay, so last week we discussed the two, remember that we found the answer for the two because we looked at when the sample size increase, uh, what happens, remember that, that we said when the sample size increase, the, uh, uh, the, the, the graph becomes narrower. And when it decreases, the graph become wider because we divide the standard deviation by the sample size. So when this size is smaller, it doesn't affect too much of the other side. But when it's bigger or when it's smaller, then the standard deviation becomes bigger and it affects the other side. So we covered that on Wednesday. So today we can look at the two because now using the same information, we changed the confidence levels. So now let's go back to our previous questions. Oh, before we go to the previous question. So this one says when the confidence level increases. So what it says, if I have a 90 and 99, 99, is increased from 90 to 99. It says if it increases, so the bigger the confidence level, the wider your your uh, your boundaries. So 
it says. So if this is the bigger, the confidence, if this is minus three, and this is minus, uh, this is positive 10, then it means for a decrease, it says it's narrower. So for the decrease, it, it, this question says, then it will be like there. So this will be eight, and this will be minus one. The big, the bigger the confidence interval, the bigger the confidence levels, the wider the confidence levels, or the confidence intervals. The smaller the confidence level, the uh, smaller the, the confidence interval. So let's look, let's go ahead and test that assumption. So here we have 95, here we have 99. So 99 has 892. So 99 has 892 and 907. That is 99. If we go to 95, which is smaller, has 894 and 905. Uh, 894, 905. 894 will be somewhere here. For some reason, I cannot get my menu for the... Oh, it's hidden. My menu for the pants. As you see now, the reason why I don't want to... We're gonna see things that I'm not supposed to see, and I'm gonna share things that I'm not supposed to share because I'm sharing my entire screen. Oh, come on, come on! Sorry, 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 sorry. Let me and un let me unshare my entire screen. It's going to be very frustrating. We'll have to deal with that because I don't want to share things that I that I don't want to appear on the video. Okay, so let's come back here. So at 95, it's 894 and 905. So let's go back there. 894, so actually there I was going to the wrong one. 894 and 905. So this is 95% and this is 99%. So with 99% it says if it's bigger it is wider. So the bigger, the wider, narrower. So let's go to our question now. The question says, so remember we had, bigger, did we say narrower or wider? Wider, bigger is wide, and small is narrow. So if we come here and answer the question, when we only use the confidence level, it increases. When the confidence level increases, the estimate becomes wider. So that is correct. And the second one says when the confidence level decreases, the, uh, the confidence estimate becomes narrower. So that is correct. So the only thing that we can choose from is option number one and option number two to see if they are correct or incorrect. I'm not sure if we did answer that on Wednesday, So, but we can do that. We can take one of this questions that we have already, what we can do 
instead of using a hundred, let's say this our n, but then it means also our it will mean our our will change also, so all of them will change. And it will also mean if we reduce, let's say our N reduced to 50, then it means we need to recalculate this in order for us to test the, the logic. So this is meant only to answer question, the question number three. So we already did the other part. So uh, you need to go and find the degrees of freedom for t 0, 0.025 because we well which one are we using now? 99. So we're going to go away it is 99, which is at 0, 0.005 and our degrees of freedom of 49. What do you get as a critical value? I'm not going to the table. What is the degrees of freedom? Two point six eight zero. Two point eight zero. Two point six eight zero. Zero. Okay, so let's calculate what we have. We have thirty divided by the square root of fifty equals four comma two four two six multiplied by two point six eight zero gives us nine hundred plus or minus 2.6 plus or minus 11.3703 this will be 900 minus 11.30 3703 and 900 plus 11.3703. So let's quickly find that. So minus 900 minus 11 point, we get 888.6. I'm just going to keep two decimals. And on the other side, where we have 900 plus, we have 911.37. So now, remember, we're talking about the N now. Ne? Ah, because now you, you still have the answer for this one. Eh? It was 907. What was the confidence level for the original one? Eight nine two point one two 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 nine zero seven point eight seven. And the site was nine oh seven. seven. Point whatever the number is. So now, based on the two, so if we look at, and that's what it says. So if we look at the sample size of 100, we got 
9.2 and if we look uh, at 9.07, this is for n equals to 100. So let's look for n less. So if we have n of 50, we get 8.8.8.8. So it will be here. And 9, 11, it will be there. So this is for n equals to equals to 50. So now let's make a decision. When n is small or when it decreases, it is wider. When it is big, then it is narrower. Can you see that? So let's go to our question. Small, wider, big, narrow. So it's the opposite of what we had. So this is for confidence, confidence level. For N, when it's big, it's narrow when it's small. So small n, n, n. When it's small, it's wider. So let's go. Only when the sample size increases, so when it becomes bigger, says it narrows. That is correct. And when it decreases, when it's smaller, it becomes wider, which is then it is correct. So it means this and this and this and this are correct. So which statement is incorrect? None of the above. Is the only option that you can choose because all of them are correct. None of the above meaning none of the statement is incorrect. And that's how you're going to answer some of the questions. By calculating some of the values and making sense of them in order for you to be able to. <clears throat> okay. Moving to the next one. Reading this question, it says the human resource director of a large corporation wishes to study absenteeism among clerical workers at the corporation central office during the previous year. A random sample of 25 clerical workers reveal a mean absenteeism of 9.7 days with the variance of 16 days. Assuming that the population of absences is normally distributed, the 95% confidence interval for the average number of days of absence for clerical workers last year is. Can you see how they posed the question? A random sample of clerical workers reveal a mean of 9.7 days with a variance of 16 days. Because the variance is on the same sentence with the sample, we can assume that this variance we're talking about, this is the sample variance, which is S squared. We need to go find our S by just taking the square root of your x squared, so we take the square root of 16, which is equals to 4. And since the population standard deviation is also not given, so we're going to use x bar plus or minus the critical value alpha divided by 2 and the degrees of freedom times s divided by the square root of n. <clears throat> 
the square root of n. So we need to go find the critical value t alpha divided by 2 n minus 1. Our alpha, they have given us 95%. By now you should know that your alpha at 95% is 0 0.05 and alpha divided by 2 is 0 0.025. Our n, they have given you is 25, so it's 25 minus 1, therefore t 0, 0,025 and 24. Go find the critical value and tell me what the value is. If you are still lost and you don't know how to find the critical value, please talk now ask because I'm no longer going to look for it. I'm going to wait for you to give me the critical value all the time. Uh, 2.060. 2.060. Okay, what does our mean? Is it not 64? Oh, yes, you're right. It's 2.064. I need to use a ruler. 2.064. What is our mean? 9.7. 9.7. Plus or minus our critical value, we did go find it. It's 2.064 times our standard error sample is 4 divided by the square root of n our n is 25 do the calculation let's do the calculations so <clears throat> we have 4 divided by the square root of 25, which is 4 divided by 5, is 0, 0,8. Multiply that with 2.064, we get 1,6512. 1,6512. One, two. Did you get it the same as mine? And yes. we expand to 9.7 minus 1.6512. Oh, let me close the bracket. And we go 9.7. plus 1.6512. Let's calculate minus 9.7 minus 1.6512. We get 8.6512. And uh, their answer is sometimes left at four decimals, three decimals. We're going to leave ours at four decimals as well. 8.0488 for now. And then we can look at which options later on. And 9.7 plus 1.6 we get 11 point, uh, maybe I must use points, not commas, because it complicates my work. This is point. Point. 
point three five one two. Do you get the same? So if we're yes. looking, let's start with the process of eliminating. So almost most of them they might be correct, all of them. So like for example, this I will just look at the last digit and make an and say maybe or maybe not because they almost the same. So if I look at this, also the last bit is different to what we have. So I'm just going to leave it there and to the three. If I run it to three decimals, this won't be right. If I leave it to three decimals as well, that won't be right because I have 11, they have 15, they have 16. So yeah, I have 11, 11. So we just need to check the following. So let's round off to two decimals our answers because then we have the two to compare to. So 8.05 if we round off correctly. And the site will be 11.35. So this won't be right. And the answer will be option number two. Um, this is very tricky because also this option, in a way, it could have. And you might you 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 might say, oh, but that looks almost close close to. But they have the correct answer there. So when they run it off. So we have 10 minutes and I'm not sure in that 10 minutes whether we we will be able to or oh, this is the repeat of the same question we answered. So we don't we don't even have to look at this. Let's see, are there more questions? So there is another question. You can do this. Let's see. Um, we have 10 minutes and I think you can still do this. Uh, from the information given below, at 90% confidence interval, so it means we're going to use alpha of 0, 0,10. Our X bar is 200, our N is 100, and our S, which is sample standard deviation, is 5. So we're going to use the formula plus or minus alpha divided by 2 and the degrees of freedom s divided by the square root of n and we go find t alpha divided by 2 and the degrees of freedom so we know that that is t is 0 comma 1 0 n is 100 minus 1 i'm oh, sorry this must divide by 2 so our t will be 0 comma 0 5 and 99. You must go find the critical value. 1.660. 1.660. So we substitute our X bar is 200 plus or minus our critical value of 1,660 times standard error, which is 5 divided by the square root of n, which is 100. So do the calculations. And give me the answer for 5 divided by the square root of 100 times the standard error, the critical value. 5 divided by the square root of 100. Multiply that with 1.660. What do you get? I get 0, 0,5. 
8300. Do you also get the same? Yes. yes. So then we have 200 minus 0 0.8300 and 200 plus 0 0.8300. Two hundred minus zero point eight three zero zero, we get one nine nine point. How many decimals do we leave this? Two. The answer is in four decimal, four decimal, three decimal, three decimal, and integer. And I already can see that I don't get the answer that they gave me as options also. Yes. And then on the other side, it is 200 plus 0.83, which is 200.83. So I'm going to assume that and that are close. That is not close. That is not close. This is even way out. Okay. That is close, but it is more because it's 1.8. If I round it up to two decimal, this this will be 1.7, which will almost exactly be the same as what we have. This is 8.2, which is way out. This will be 8.3. So option number two. Unless it's my calculator that cuts off some decimals. Let's see again. 5 divided by the square root of 100. is 0 0,5. Multiply that by 1,60, uh, 60, 0, 0,83. Uh -uh. Okay. And with that, we are done for the day. Just to summarize and recap on what we just did today. We looked at some of the basic concepts again of confidence intervals. We learned how to construct the confidence interval for the population mean when the population standard deviation is known. And with that, it concludes today's session. If there is any comment, question, query, clarity, anything, the platform is yours. If there is nothing, then enjoy the rest of your day and your weekend. I will see you on Wednesday when we look at confidence intervals for the proportion we're going to go back to using the Z table. I hope you all submitted your assignment two and you are busy with your assignment three because the content that we're working on now is for assignment four. And I know that your assignment three, assignment one, two, until three, I think they were extended. And your assignment three is extended until the 5th of July. So please check your My Life email as well to, to check all the notifications that are sent by your lecture as well. 
if there are no questions, then we can call it the quits and go have fun and enjoy our weekend. Bye everyone. Thank you for coming. Hey, Lizzie. Bye, Lizzie.